Welcome to the Rent to Rent Success Podcast, the only podcast entirely dedicated to helping you achieve rent to rent success. We talk about the ethical way to get you started in property without buying it. This is our place to inspire each other to believe bigger, to be bolder, and to be game changers for good. Property investors and sisters Stephanie and Nikki Taylor are your guides on this exciting ride. Let's start up the engines and get ready to fly. Hello, hello, hello. It's Stephanie here. Hope you are feeling amazing today. And I'm here with episode nine of Ask the Angels, where we answer your rent to rent questions. If you'd like to have your question answered here on the show, go to renttorentsuccess.com slash ask, A-S-K, and record your question for me to answer. Today's question is one that really foxes people. It's all about rent to rent contracts. Here's Real One's question. And also, what type of um, contract would you use for a rent to rent? And, you know, my... My initial thought would be a maintenance contract, um, you know, because you're essentially in charge of maintaining the property. So it would be good to know what sort of legal help and in terms of cost as well, how much, you know, this could potentially cost. Thank you. Great question. What type of contract would you use for rent to rent? It's one that confuses people. It's one that stops people from getting started. And that's not surprising because getting your contracts wrong can be costly. So there are two types of rent to rent contracts which should be used between you as the rent to renter and the landlord or letting agent. And that is a lease agreement and a management agreement. A lease agreement, this is this agreement is a commercial lease and gives you the right to rent the property and rent it out again to your own tenants or guests for a specified period of time. You would use a rent to rent lease agreement when your agreement is direct with the owner and the property is an existing HMO or commercial property. The second type of agreement that you can use is called a management agreement. And this agreement gives you the right to manage the property on a specified basis. By that, I mean either as an HMO house share or a service apartment or a single let. So you would you would use a rent to rent management agreement when your agreement is either with the letting agent or the owner. You can use it both ways. And the property is not an existing HMO or a commercial property. So. You you also mentioned real world um, maintenance contract. I think you might mean that a management contract. If not, let me know. Uh, write back in and let me know. Um, management contracts and lease agreements are the two types of contracts that we use for rent to rent properties. And with either agreement, it's important to ensure that you explain to the property owner that they must ensure two things: that their mortgage lending, if they have a mortgage on the property allows the use of the property as a house share and HMO for the tenant type you want or permits use as serviced accommodation. The second thing is that you need to make sure that insurance allows the use of the property as either an HMO for the types of tenants you want or permits serviced accommodation. So it's two things, the mortgage lending and the insurance. And so many people who would be able to set up a great business, don't go ahead because of these concerns about mortgages. Uh, The simple thing to do here is if you're working, if you're doing HMOs, is to work with existing HMOs. Those landlords already have the right lending and insurance in place. And yes, Rent to Rent does work with existing HMOs. And I have a podcast episode all about this. It explains Article 4 too, and it's episode 47 of the podcast. And you can find it at renttorentsuccess.com slash 47, 47. So you also asked what sort of legal help you'll need and how much this could potentially cost. And Many people ask, well, do I need to use a solicitor? 
So yes, you can go to a solicitor and have your contract drawn up. Using a solicitor is expensive and it's time consuming. And you might think you'll get a better result and you'll be more protected if anything goes wrong. Well, we thought that too. We were surprised to find that many solicitors do not understand the business model of rent to rent, even though they will tell you that they do. And if you have any issues and you go back to your solicitor, you'll find that in the contract you sign with them, you've agreed that with extremely few exceptions, they are not liable if anything goes wrong. Because let's face it, they're lawyers and they write these contracts to protect themselves too. So to protect yourself as much as possible, it's important to use the right contract and include the right clauses. Many people don't realize that solicitors start with a template for each contract type, and then they rely on you to advise all the clauses that you would like to see in the contract. And when you're starting out, you won't know all of the clauses that you need. And if they are unfamiliar with rent to rent, which most solicitors are, even when they say they know what it is, your solicitor won't know which specific clauses you need to have included. Over the years, we've had our contract revised and updated to add new clauses. For example, one of the things I see people quite a bit struggling with is when a landlord won't make essential repairs, such as fixing a broken boiler quickly in winter. So our contract states that owners must respond to emergency repairs in a specified period and agree works to be carried out. If this doesn't happen, we are able to carry out the works and recover the funds from rent. We've never had to do this because we have great relationships with all of our landlords, but the clause is there for exceptional circumstances to protect our tenants. And we also include a clause which states that if the law or statutory regulations change, which change council tax, or our ability to multi-let the property, we can renegotiate and or exit the agreement. We now include a clause to protect you too if there are further lockdowns due to coronavirus or any other reason. And we have a one-way break clause, which yes, landlords do agree to because of the way it's written. And that is all in the, in the contracts that we have with the legal advice we've taken over many years to get them just spot on to what we need for a rent to rent contract. And these are just a few of the many important examples I could give you about clauses that need to be included in your rent to rent contract. So make sure you work with someone who understands rent to rent and test for it. Even if a solicitor says they understand rent to rent, uh, you need to test them by asking some questions, which I'll come on to in a moment. So How much do solicitors charge for rent-to-rent contracts? Um, You asked about how much you can expect to pay for a contract. A person wrote to me recently to say they've been quoted £900 for rent-to-rent contracts. It can vary, I'd say, to allow between £500 and £1,200 for the contracts. And I mentioned you need to check that your solicitor truly understands rent-to-rent. Ask them how they would handle the following situations in the contract and don't move ahead with them if they don't know the answers. So how would they handle break clauses in the contract? How would they handle coronavirus lockdowns in the contract? How would they handle changes to HMO law or council tax in the contract? And how would they handle the landlord not doing essential maintenance in the contract? These are some of the things the solicitor should know. If your solicitor doesn't know these things, run for the hills, because these are just some of them. There are many others. If you need a solicitor who's done rent to rent contracts. And because of all the difficulties that we saw our students having with rent to rent contracts, we've made our rent to rent contracts available to buy. As we saw so many people using expensive solicitors who did not have the expertise to deliver what is needed for a rent to rent business. And our contracts are a small fraction of the price you'd pay a solicitor. And we haven't just included the contract, 
because we know that some people and some programs just give you a PDF version. So you can't actually use the actual contract that you get. And they don't explain each clause. So what we've done is we've broken it down so you fully understand the contracts. This is what you get. You get both the commercial lease and the management agreements. And you also get the contracts that you'll need between yourself and your tenants. That's the assured shorthold tenancy agreement and the license to occupy if you're using for um, service accommodation or if you're using for contractors for whom it's not their main residence. So you get all of the contracts you need for rent to rent. First of all, you get the guide. Now, this is a guide as to when to use each type of contract. I've covered it above um, in the beginning, but also you've got it all written down there for you. We've got an understanding document. This is an explainer document explaining each clause and translating it from legalese into English so that you really understand it. We've got a sample document. This is a sample of a completed contract showing you how to complete the contracts. And then we've got a template. This is a template Word document for you to uh, add your own branding, your own logo, your own details and start using straight away. We've included everything you need to be successful and lots of things that you don't even know that you need yet. So you can find all of that at renttorentsuccess.com slash contract. And if you're in the Kickstarter program, you have all this already. You'll find everything contractual in M5.7, the Landlord and Agent Contract Pack. So in summary, Rizwan, the contracts to use are a lease agreement or a management agreement. You can use a solicitor and it's likely to be in the range of 500 to 1200 pounds. But many solicitors are not familiar with rent to rent. So do check that they know how to handle break clauses, further coronavirus lockdowns, changes to HMO Lord, at law, a landlord not doing essential maintenance. Do all that before you work with any solicitor. Or you can use our contracts, which we've spent thousands of pounds on honing over the years, so they protect your business. And they're available at renttorentsuccess.com slash contracts. So that was a juicy, a big, beefy one today. Uh, if you would like to get your question answered, go to renttorentsuccess.com slash ask. Record your question and I'll record an answer for you for a future episode. Or if you want to know more a deep dive on the whole of what is this rent to rent, uh, rent, to rent malarkey about, then get our free guide and masterclass at renttorentsuccess.com slash guide. And we'll send that over to you. That's all for now. (coughs) Sorry, I'm joking. That's all for now. I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for being with me here today. If you would like more, we've written the number one best-selling book on Rent to Rent. You can find it at renttorentsuccess.com slash book. Reviewers on Amazon have described it as the best Rent to Rent HMO book and also as a definitive reference guide and inspirational. Take your next step today and buy the book. You can find it at rent number two rent success.com slash book. And I'll see you again next time. Until then, remember, believe bigger, be bolder, be a game changer. <laughs>